guys, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. Here's an image after the uh, supposed cleanup there in Palestine, Ohio, after the train rail derailment. What they did was just push a bunch of the stuff over by the tree line, brought in some dirt, and just covered it up without removing much of the toxic materials. Recently, uh, FEMA said that they will not be helping the people, about 5,000 people that live there in East Palestine. They're not eligible for disaster assistance. FEMA said the derailment and subsequent chemical spill and the controlled burn that sent toxic chemicals into the air don't qualify as a traditional disaster such as tornadoes or hurricanes. On February 3rd, a 150 Norfolk Southern Railway freight train was passing through East Palestine when 50 of the cars derailed, including 11 containing hazardous chemicals. The crash has been attributed to a mechanical issue with the rail car axle. Evidently, there was a bearing uh, that went out. This here you can see, um, yeah, it's all piled up around trees and it still is sitting there, hasn't been cleaned up. And yeah, with heavy rains, evidently they're getting, yeah, that's just going to soak into the ground even more. This here is an image of one of the recent town meetings. You can see all the people lined up trying to, you know, get in there. Um, they probably couldn't all fit. Um, it was held in an auditorium, I believe. Security camera footage emerged showing that the train may have been on fire for at least 20 miles before it finally derailed in East Palestine. Yeah, sparks were coming out, flames were coming out, and evidently the engineer did not have any idea what the problem was. The footage was from a security camera at a equipment plant in Salem, Ohio approximately 20 miles from East Palestine. The footage showed what appeared to be flames and sparks underneath the cars as the train passed the plant. Norfolk Southern is offering inconvenient checks of $1,000. What an insult to residents within the designated proximity of the derailment. Mike Oshie, who is the pr uh, principal and owner of Lipson Oshi Legal Group and representing families impacted by the derailment, caution people about accepting the compensation. They are warning people not to accept it if they possibly can, because later the railroad may say that this is f payment in full. Speaking at a news conference last Tuesday, Governor Mike DeWine said that he had learned that the train cars were marked as non-hazardous and thus officials weren't notified that the train would be crossing through the state. The state has a law that um, hazardous materials um, must be um, yeah, labeled. The governor called on Congress to look into the regulations that would allow a train carrying multiple cars with hazardous substances to be labeled non-hazardous. He said that, frankly, if this is true, this is absurd and we need to look into this, DeWine said. We should know when we have trains carrying hazardous materials that are going through the state of Ohio. According to federal guidelines, a high hazard flammable train is one that transports 20 or more cars of a class 3 flammable liquid in a continuous block or 35 or more cars in a train. Pete Buttigieg is the U.S. Transport Secretary. Um, here he's shown with his hub husband with uh, two new babies. He evidently is under fire for not responding to the disaster. For um, 10 days it was. Yeah, it took him 10 days to respond. Um, his prior resume was being a mayor um, in the state of Indiana. Um, and he was elected, I guess, to office. He was also a former Navy intelligence officer who served in Afghanistan. Um, and that's it. That's all he's got. Um, he's a Democrat. Go figure. 
His husband evidently is a middle school teacher. Yesterday on February 16th, um, East Palestinian residents gathered for a town hall at the village high school. North Polk Southern was invited, but declined to send representatives, citing fears for their safety. Officials from the EPA did show up. Yeah, they're the same ones uh, that said that the air quality was good. Yeah, the same people who told the people of Manhattan that the air quality was good on September 11th. Yeah, 9-11. They evidently, too, stopped air monitoring on September 14th. Here's a document that I found. Um, dioxins not tested in East Palestine. Now, this was from the 4th. This is from Water Analysis, it says here. It says here that this was last edited on the 16th, which would have been yesterday. And all the boxes that are not checked, let me go up and I'll show you are things that they have not done. Um, let's go up here, because somewhere it shows where the testing was stopped on the 14th. Here it says, unchecked boxes indicate they have not been fully incorporated into the spreadsheet. And everything's unchecked. Okay. Um, and it gives names here of, um, the, I assume, the... Uh, um, pi um, polychlorine and the different dioxins that were found and other chemicals that um, Eurofins Scientific suggested they test for and there's a whole list of them now this paper here is from February 14th and it talks about how they're so concerned about your health and safety. It says how the EPA Region 5 is also working closely with the Ohio EPA to determine what impact the spill has had on the surface and groundwater. State and local agencies are conducting samples throughout the Ohio River to ensure drinking water intakes aren't affected. Um, I got a video clip that that I'm going to show you um, one reporter was down by a river and he scraped a stick across the uh, soil at the bottom of the river and you can see the chemicals coming up all right here's the document I was looking for um, on the evening of February 13th US EPA discontinued air monitoring for the phosphogene and hydrogen chloride community air monitoring after the fire was extinguished on February 8th, the threat of vinyl chloride fire producing phosphogenes and hydrochloride no longer exists. Yeah, they said that about 9-11. Oh, the air there in New York was absolutely safe. So the air monitoring was discontinued on February 13th. Let me show you something. This here came from NOAA. I found it. And it's the only thing I could find that showed the plume of smoke going all the way up to Canada and across, yeah, all the way up to uh, Maryland, the different um, particles. And let me bring this down and I'll show you here um, the hype. Let me bring that in and I'll bring it over the height of the plume. Now, a lot of corn comes from there. A lot of soils, peat moss, um, the things that we eat. And this stuff is going to slowly go into the soil. And it could be a disaster going on for years and years and years. Yeah, and you're going to start seeing uh, uh, new rates, higher rates of cancer and other types of health effects, birth defects, things like that in the future. Going to Google Earth, here is East Palestine. And the railroad tracks run right through the center, both sides of the town. And evidently, um, some of the stuff flowed into Sulphur Run. Tried to find where that was that um, at, and this is all I could find. Um, today, 
along the Ohio River. The toxins were supposed to reach, let me find it, Weirton. So let me draw this out for you so you can actually see. Um, it's supposedly about 200, darn it, it's not working. There we go. About 250 uh, miles down the river, but it's 28 miles as the crow flies. And the toxins were supposed to reach this area today. And then it's going to flow into the Mississippi. Uh, we already got reports of basically killing everything along the river. All kinds of fish. Even the worms are coming up that are dead. You know, they got extreme weather going on. You've heard the old story about don't eat yellow snow. Well, don't eat the snow because it's going to have all this uh, contaminants in it. A thousand dollars for being inconvenienced by the uh, railroad derailment. People had to move out their pets. They had to move out horses, um, people and their dogs. The one lady evidently had a kennel for dogs she had to move out. I don't think a thousand dollars is going to cover that. Um, people that had to leave behind their chickens, well, those chickens are dead. Reports of foxes being dead. Um, some some people didn't evacuate and they let their dog out and they came back sick. Um, dead dogs. Yeah, what about the cats? Yeah, all that crap, let's call it. it it's a toxic crap is going to be there forever. They didn't scrape the ground to remove the chemicals, so it's going to slowly seep into the water table. It's going to affect the crops. Look how many years it took for the emergency first responders to get any type of help after 9-11. Is anybody going to come and help these people of East Palestine? And what about all the people along the Mississippi River who draw their water and the Ohio River that draw their water for all of their citizens from there? Yeah, I mean, just go down the Ohio River and, yep, look at all these cities. Yep. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please share. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.